All right, so this is round three, fight four in the coolest chemist battle. This is the last of the round. We've got in the left corner, we've got uh, Alex Doyen representing Alfred Nobel. On the right corner, we've got uh, Sammy Nickel representing Ernest Rutherford. Whoa. Sammy won the coin flip and is elected to go second. So, Alfred Nobel, you have two minutes to present on your coolest chemist. Your two minutes starts now. <coughs> Yeah, so I did this last time where I kind of went over the purpose of the competition. I was looking for the coolest chemist, so whatever chemist, you know, was the coolest, his intentions. Not coolest physicist, sorry, but coolest chemist. Uh, so Alfred Nobel was my chemist. Uh, basically what he did, he went to his father's work factory and uh, he, made, he made explosives. <coughs> so he saw how dangerous explosives were and making them, transporting them, all of those is really dangerous. Uh, so he tried to make them safer. <coughs> And uh, what he did was he, I think he added another, he just added more to it. He added another nitrogen, which made it safer, but also more powerful. And uh, w she might say that it was used for bad, but he only wanted it for good. And then he also made modern plywood. So it's, he tried to, all his whole purpose in life was for safety. That's all he did. Um, <coughs> so another example of it was that uh, he noticed that TNT had such lower accident rates that he made he gave it to free to mining companies and to shipping companies, even though he had 350 patents that he charged money for. <coughs> My opponent also say that his mention was evil. He supported the Crimean War or that he was greedy, and I can easily dispute all of them. <coughs> his sole purpose in making TNT was to make it safer as well as making plywood. His parents supported the Crimean War, not him. If your dad was a Nazi, would that mean you're a Nazi? No, his parents did it, not him. <coughs> uh, then uh, he wasn't greedy because he left a majority of his money to a trust that was people in chemistry, physics, literature, and medicine, and peace. <coughs> and quoting him, the awards go to people, those who during the preceding year shall have conferred the greatest benefit on mankind. In mind of Jared's, Alex's, and Josh's presentations on the importance and prestige of the Nobel Prize, <coughs> proving its importance in modern science, and Nobel also has an L name after him, Nobelium. That's it, thanks for my time. All right. Coming in in a minute and 50 seconds. All right, so, Sammy, you got two minutes to tell us why Ernest Rutherford is the coolest chemist. Your two minutes start now. So my guy is Sir Ernest Rutherford. He's the father of nuclear physics, the father of the nuclear age, one of the fathers of physics, Baron Rutherford of Nelson, president of the Institute of Physics, and nicknamed Crocodile for always looking forward. Rutherford is the coolest chemist because he contributed an unimaginable amount of information to the scientific community. He not only revolutionized chemistry, but physics, geology, alchemy, education, and society. This guy did everything. Although he was barely a chemist, he did more for chemistry than others who dedicated their lives to it. Chemistry is all about elements. Elements are made up of three things, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Rutherford discovered and named the proton, and he helped Thomson discover the electron. So he discovered about half of the basics of chemistry. Through his gold foil experiment, he created the Rutherford model of the atom. He, which was the first to feature a, nuclea, a nucleus, which is the coolest thing since Og discovered fire. He was the world's first successful alchemist because he was the first to person to split the atom. He discovered and named alpha and beta rays along with naming and proving gamma was a type of x-ray. He set forth the laws of radioactive decay, ultimately giving us carbon dating, which lets us know the Earth's age. He discovered how to artificially induce a nuclear reaction in a stable element. People blame him for the creation of the atomic bomb when in reality he was extremely against nuclear warfare. He said he hoped scientists would not learn to extract atomic energy until, quote, man was at peace with his neighbors, unquote. During his free time, he petitioned for women's rights, freedom of speech, and tried to convince authorities to make young, young men research rather than be put on the front lines during World War I. When he died, he was buried in Westminster Abbey next to Isaac Newton, surrounded by many, many other influential people from history. Some fun facts about him is he helped us with acoustic submarine detection in World War I. He has an element named after him, Rutherfordium, number 104 and a mineral, Rutherfordine. His contributions are ranked with Charles Darwin and Isaac Newton. He helped, with the he helped found the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research. He won, he won a boatload of awards. One of those is a Nobel Prize, but still won one. He played rugby, which is awesome, and he discovered a detective for electromagnetic waves. He's the founder of Rutherford Scattering, and he was known to be very humane and always gave credit to where it belonged. All right, so that was the presentation. Very good job, both of you. Nobel versus Rutherford. It is now time to cross-examine each other. If you, in your research, if you found anything that puts your opponent in a negative light, is now is the time to do it. You may either ask a question or make a statement of fact. 
and then your opponent is allowed to address that. So Rutherford, you get to go first. You find any you have anything that you would like to present against Alfred Nobel. Okay, so Nobel has a title as the merchant of death. He was said to be quote, the man who became rich by finding ways to kill more people faster than ever before, and quote, the man who made millions on the deaths of others, unquote. Even though he did it for good reasons, he still killed people. Is this accurate? Can I respond to that? Yes. Uh, everything you just said was from one newspaper like 200, 150 years ago. So if you want to base an entire character, an entire base of discovery on one newspaper and one author, you can do that. But I'm not. My turn? Yes, now you're now Nobel, you have a chance to bring up bring forth any other argument. I was researching Rutherford and I, and I found this quote. He said, All science is physics or stamp collecting. What do you mean by that? It means that physics is how he discovered the proton, which ultimately helped chemistry, and from chemistry there's biology. If you were to rank the science on how they like influence each other, physics would be at the top. So being a physicist, he's also a chemist. So the argument of he's not a chemist kind of goes away. <laughs> You can take another shot if you'd like. After confusing his death with his brothers, an obituary was published which stated the remarks from above, so it was actually posted about 200 years ago. Stunned by what he read, Nobel decided to create his Nobel Peace Prize to, quote, do something to improve his legacy, Nobel's own words. So was legacy all he cared about when creating the Nobel Prize and not helping further people and science? Well, well he made it trust, so if you think it's for his legacy, it wasn't. Uh, if you think about his legacy, he invested in something like a charity, museums, or anything. He could have done anything with his money. He could have done something with his legacy that his family, but he chose to invest in his sciences. And all the five sciences he picked, medicine, chemistry, peace, all help development today. Uh, Nobel, do you have anything? Uh, yeah. So you said he discovered protons. Do you mean protons we know today? Or do you mean neutrons? Because he didn't know the difference. Uh, and called them both protons. And it took 21 years to disprove Rutherford by, by a chemist known as Chadwick. What do you think of that? Okay. Whether or not it's the proton and the neutron he discovered, which I'm pretty sure is the proton, still helped, no matter what it was. I mean, with, if they didn't know for sure, then how would he have differentiated? He didn't. He called neutrons well, no, and the protons one guy proton. later. Okay. So. Anything else, Rutherford? Yeah. Aside from the Nobel Prize and plywood, the only thing he did really was create TNT. How can you compare the importance of the proton to something like TNT? Protons are what identifies an element, not how many sticks of dynamite it has. Oh. Oh. All right, go ahead, Nobel. Defend that. Yeah. Well, if you, you look at his work, uh, you can say that he discovered the proton. Well, TNT wasn't all he did. I'd say the major thing he did for the world was his Nobel Prize. Uh, like I, I could say that your Rutherford contributed physics a lot more than chemistry. Well, mine contributed chemistry as well, but he contributed more to with the world, more than Rutherford. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Nobel, anything else to add? Uh, one second. Yeah, for someone who claims to be against a nuclear bomb, isn't it extremely ironic that he's the single most important aspect of its development? The father of nuclear physics? Nuclear, like Jared had said, can also like be green energy. It doesn't have to be a nuclear bomb. Nuclear fission, which is what makes a nuclear bomb, wasn't discovered until two years after his death. So he contributed to science. And it's not his fault that from there someone took his work and made it bad. That's the same as saying anybody who's blown anybody up with TNT, it's directly Nobel's fault because it's not. <clears throat> didn't you just give him credit for playing the proton, even though someone else continued his work later? Someone continued his work on nuclear physics to make the nuclear bomb. Doesn't that go yeah. both ways, Sam? Well, he didn't. He thought he discovered the proton. <laughs> so All right. Anything <laughs> else? I think that's. I think we've done a, a pretty All good right. job examining you both. Been thoroughly taken to task, and you both did a fantastic job. Give them a big hand, guys.